So thank you so much. And uh, myself is Jyotsna Chaturvedi. I'm the head corporate practice at Maheshwari and Company Advocates and Legal Concerns. So today we are speaking on regulatory compliances for commissioning of hydrogen projects, which would be assisted. Uh, with the other part of my presentation would be also presented by my colleague Akhan Pratap Singh Chauhan, and this presentation is presented by assisted by Shamli Shukla. So the total agenda about the whole uh, presentation is a small snippet about our firm, the concept of the green hydrogen, which we already know, the green hydrogen mission, which we have been uh, told about and that has been announced by the government, the commissioning of the projects and the regulations which are associated with that, transportation of the uh, green hydrogen as may be required, the rules with respect to that, the rules for manufacturing and storage of hazardous chemicals, Rules for transportation of hazardous chemicals, applicability of the Electricity Act 2003, commissioning of desalination plan, awaited notification, and what lies ahead. So this would be the complete forum of our presentation today. So talking about us, uh, we are a full service law firm and we have been there in the legal era, legal area arena for a long term, for more than a decade's time. And we have been having a well, we are having a full service law firm which consists of all corporate litigation intellectual property and taxation team members uh, which consists of lawyers company secretaries chartered accountants and subject matter experts as well so we have our uh, german partner knpp so knpp and maheshwari company has assisted and uh, led various transactions uh, talking with Germany into India, like which talks about cryogenic technology and pressure valves. We also have done various transactions on the CNC machines and other uh, particular transactions which technology were involved and technological collaboration were involved. So now we will take up uh, this presentation to the green hydrogen and its regulatory framework. Uh, where we would talk upon the concept of the green hydrogen, as we all know. Uh, so I will not go into de detail into that, how the water molecules of the hydrogen is being formed. However, the major stages in the ever process which requires legal perspective is production, second is storage, third is transportation, fourth is distribution, and the uh, last is conversion into energy. So these are the major uh, major points on which we need discussion and deliberation. So this is about the green hydrogen policy, the green hydrogen standard for India, which has been specified emission threshold of 2 kg CO2 equivalent to per kg hydrogen uh, as a month average. So this notification came on 19th of August 2023. And it is a significant move for the progress of the national green hydrogen mission as the government has notified it. And the standard issued by the MNRE, which is the government of India, part of government of India, outlines the emission threshold that must be met in order for hydrogen produced to be classified as green from renewable resources. So the scope of the definition encompasses both electrolyzed-based and biomass-based hydrogen production methods. And uh, the notification specifies that a detailed methodology for measurement, reporting, monitoring, on-site verification, and certification of green hydrogen and its derivative shall be specified by the MNRE. So if you see the National Green Hydrogen Mission, we'll just touch upon the topic. Uh, the objective is to make India the global hub for production, usage, and export of green hydrogen and its derivative. Uh, the mission is to be build cap capabilities to produce at least 5 million metric ton of green hydrogen per annum by 2030, uh, which potential to reach 10 MMT per annum with growth of export markets. And India has set its right side to become energy independent by 2047 and achieve a net zero by 2070, which is a critical and very ambitious project. The mission is to implement in a phased manner focus initially on deployment of green hydrogen sectors that are already using hydrogen and the later phase will build on these foundational activities to undertake green hydrogen initiatives in new sectors. So the ministries, uh, the major ministries I should say, which would be involved under the mission would be 
the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, which is MNRE, Ministry of Power, Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas, Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers, Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways, Ministry of Steel, Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways. So these are the major ministries which would be involved in this. So the, if we see the mission governance framework uh, that has been well put and the empowered group consists of the cabinet secretary who's chairing the same, the members are principal scientific advisor to the government of India, which is Niti Aayog and secretaries of MNRE, uh, Petroleum, Natural Gas, Power, Road, Transport and Highways and all other ministries. The advisory group is also formed and the mission secretariat has also been formed in this respect. And the flexible and reserve oriented government structure has been created for the steering and guiding the implementation of the mission. The governance framework will oversee the mission activities, provide guidance, continuously monitor process, recommend policy interventions to be made in furtherance of this mission objectives. And the secretaries of other ministries, departments, chief secretaries, and other experts may be invited as required by the empowered group. So if we talk about the recent update, which has been made, it's uh, with an overall outlay of 35,000 crore rupees in the 2023 budget, green mobility outlays rupees 19,700 crore for national green hydrogen mission. The union cabinet in Jan Jan January had approved the national green hydrogen mission with an initial outlay of 19,700 crores, including 17,490 crore for the strategic intervention for green hydrogen transition program and to support domestic manufacturing of 1,466 crore for pilot projects, 400 crore for R&D and 388 crore towards other mission components. So this has been recently announced and India has opened as the first country's first green hydrogen subsidy auction and the government has opened its first subsidy auction to support the production of green hydrogen, accepting bids which was there till 7th of September this year. Again, now we come to the regulations on the uh, stages, which we just defined in few of uh, previous slides, commissioning of projects. So presently, if we see there are no specific rules or regulations for setting up hydrogen or green ammonia or electrolyzing manufacturing units, the setup process will broadly involve based upon the current specific transactions are formation of the project entity, if separately required, raising finance for the project, identification and procurement of site for the manufacturing facility, Procurement of regulatory permits, licenses, approvals in the state and central side of it, project financing, procurement of electricity from renewable sources such as solar, wind, etc., and adequate water source, procurement of electrolyzer equipment and installation, production of green hydrogen, storage of green hydrogen, transportation and distribution of green hydrogen. These are the major uh, steps or the uh, uh, upsets of the uh, particular projects for commissioning of the projects. So if we see the first and foremost is the consent to operate and consent to establish, which is generally required for each and every such setups or project setups. Uh, so CTE is a primary clearance for all entities intending to set up a project in India and the consent to operate serves the legal consent that entities have to apply after they have the CTE. So the respective state pollution control board grants both these consents in different validity duration. Uh, the Central Pollution Control Board has also categorized all industrial sectors based upon their uh, nature of uh, pollution, which they are the nature of emissions, which they made under red, orange, green, and white categories based on the predetermined pollution index. And the process for these uh, have been also defined under the concerned SPCB uh, regulations. The applicants are required to facilitate mandatory documents and fee structures for this purpose. And the uh, post application Commission Authority undertakes the activity on on-site scrutiny, assessment of the environmental management system, and the fundamental document checking. So if we see, uh, we have also noted down the general document requirement for consent to establish and consent to operate, which consists of all the project-related documents, project reports, the entity details, entity uh, descriptions, and other major financials. So if we see the regulatory requirements, we can definitely talk about the factories. All factories in India are regulated by the Factories Act 1948, which includes without limitation all the manufacturing units undertaken by 10 or more workers with power or 20 or workers without power. The state have their separate, uh, separate set of rules uh, under the Factories Act. 
factory licenses also can be procured online and depending on the product proposed to be manufactured. Further requirements such as approvals for use of hazardous substances, plastic chemicals, etc., may be also undertaken. Uh, other approvals which may be required, including the building plan, power and water connections, clearances from the PCD, state with the SPCD, export registration to procure equipment from abroad, etc., may also be required. Again, the NOC from the concerned Department of Fire Services of the concerned state, the purpose of fire NOC is generally to ensure that property is fire resistant and it is always required to be taken for all such project setups. <laughs> Again, environmental clearance, this is also a debatable issue. So major, uh, many of the project activities require environmental clearance and it has been talked about that in some of the places this has been exempted by the State Pollution Control Board. However, it has to be still be there that uh, whether the all these project setups need environmental clearance or not. The validity of the environmental clearance granted is generally for a period of five years, and this period of validity may be extended by the regulatory authority concerned by a maximum period of five years provided an application is made duly. So that needs to be also considered. Again, the next step is the transportation. Once the production has been made, the approval from the Petroleum and Explosive Safety Organization, which is PETSO, is required to be obtained to undertake the filing filling of compressed gas in cylinders for the purpose of storage of such compressed gas in a storage shed attached to the uh, filling premises. Again, registration under the PNJRV Act is also necessary to be obtained as it regulates the refining, processing, storage, transportation, distribution, marketing, and sale of these products. So after this, I will hand over the presentation to my colleague Akhan, who will talk more about it on the other stages of the production of the green hydrogen. Over to you, Akhan. Thank you, Josna. So from here onwards, I will try to explain the existing legal framework. So first thing we need to be very clear about this, that as of now, there is no specific legal framework with regards to specifically green hydrogen. But as the blue hydrogen and gray hydrogen were very much in practice prior to this, so we are deciphering this legal framework from the existing framework, which is as of now applicable. So as of now, the first rule which is applicable upon the hydrogen is manufacture, storage and import of hazardous chemical rules, which defines hazardous chemicals. And they, they, the rule prescribes certain criteria, which, which has certain, certain parameters and the chemical properties of hydrogen fulfill the above mentioned criteria and as such it falls within the ambit of hazardous chemical. Therefore, the production and storage of hydrogen shall be governed by these rules until no specific legislations are made in this regard. This rule provides the guidelines that the occupier or manufacturer or, or any person involved in the handling of such hazardous chemical have to abide by while manufacturing, storing or importing such chemicals. Now, the, it casts certain general duties upon the occupiers, such as the occupier shall commence any industrial activity after sending a safety report 90 days before such commencement, according to the rules to the concerned authority. The occupier is also bound to furnish a report to the concerned authority in case of any change in the threshold limit of the hazardous chemical. Occupiers shall take approval from the concerned authority along with submitting a report at least three months before undertaking any industrial activity that involves hazardous chemicals. Occupier is bound to have a safety audit in respect of major accidental hazards and take adequate preventive steps to avoid such accidents. And in case of any unfortunate accident happen on site or in a pipeline, the occupier shall notify the concerned authority about the same within 48 hours and furnish thereafter a detailed report. The other duties which are casted upon occupiers include that occupiers shall carry out an independent safety audit of the respective industrial activity. Occupiers shall ensure that a mock drill of the on-site emergency plan is concluded every six months. Occupiers shall update the safety audit report once in a year by conducting fresh safety audit and forward a copy of the same within 30 days to the concerned authority. And occupiers shall arrange to obtain or develop a safety data sheet as per Schedule 9 of the rules and shall label or mark every container containing hazardous chemical with its content, name and address of manufacturer and physical, chemical and toxicological data. Now, the, the rules prescribe certain authorities. The, 
the authorities are ministry of environment forest under the environment protection act the office of chief controller of import and export under import and export control act 1947 central pollution control board or state pollution control board as the case may be district collector of the concerned place where the plant is situated and center for environment and explosive safety now the hazardous chemical rules prescribe certain guidelines for the transportation of the hazardous chemicals which are as that owner of the goods shall have a valid registration to carry the said goods the vehicle shall be equipped with the first aid kit safety equipment for preventing fire explosion or escape of hazardous goods every vehicle shall be fitted with tacho tachograph an instrument that is to record the lapse of running time of the motor vehicle in order to ascertain the speed time and acceleration of the vehicle conforming to the specification of indian standard the driver shall ensure that he follows the route to avoid fire explosion or any other accidental risk every vehicle carrying hazardous goods shall have distinctively marked emergency information panel the owner should have complete and accurate knowledge of the goods being carried the driver shall ensure that the information provided to him about the hazardous goods by his owner shall be kept in the driver's cabinet and is available all the time while the goods are transported the driver of the goods shall understand the nature and risk of the goods transported by him he should also be aware of the precautions and actions that he has to take in case of any mis happening or accident in case of any accident the driver should immediately inform the nearest police station and also the owner of the goods now the electricity act which is applicable upon such projects of green hydrogen is the vital act within this whole process that it is the act which relates which regulates the laws pertaining to generation transmission distribution trading and usage of electricity and any other ancillary issue which is connected with the energy consumption or energy production the central government in this regard has the authority from time to time to prepare the appropriate policy for the purpose of extending any incentive waivers or exemptions as may be applicable upon the energy produced by using hydrogen as a source now the electricity promoting renewable energy through green energy open access rules 2022 which has been promulgated by the central government to give priority in electricity clearance to such green hydrogen projects and it provides that any approval for open access for green hydrogen project shall be granted within 15 days of the apply of the application now the desalination plant is another important aspect of, which can be associated with any green hydrogen plant and to establish a green hydrogen uh, to establish a desalination plant there are certain approvals which are required such as consent to establish and consent to operate the no objection certificate from the fire department environmental clearance from the concerned regulatory authority registration under the factories act and coastal regulation zone clearance for, for undertaking specific activities or projects from the coastal zone management authority now there are certain awaited notifications with regards to the application process that what are the details which needs to be fulfilled and then there is detailed distribution of power has to be done among the authorities in order to avoid jurisdictional overlap a detailed central legislative policy for the green hydrogen project is also awaited and necessary specific compliance while commissioning of an hydrogen plant legal compliances for cross border transportation of hydrogen energy and international safety standards in cross border transfer these are the areas upon which the central government is uh, has to pass a, a appropriate notification so that any ambiguity could be resolved now what lies ahead the implication of the green hydrogen standard for india extend beyond domestic consideration and intertwine with india's aspirations of becoming a prominent exporter of green hydrogen as india charts its course towards a green and energy future it must navigate the delicate balance between domestic aspirations international expectations and industry requirements it is essential that the standard guidelines align with the realities of practical impact like carbon emission reduction energy availability and the broader sustainable development of objectives in conclusion the journey towards a sustainable energy future through green hydrogen is marked by its complexities and nuances it is incumbent upon us to critically assess and refine standards such as the green hydrogen standard for india to ensure their effectiveness in driving the adoption of green hydrogen while aligning with international efforts to combat climate change only through collective and thoughtful action can we harness the true potential of green hydrogen and pave the way for a cleaner more resilient future
So thank you very much. This is all about the existing legal framework with regards to green hydrogen projects in India. Thank you.